great. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Um, I'm super excited to uh, lead this sequel to this class. So for those of you that came last week and came back, thank you. And so last week we talked about what the face tells you about your health. And we started to get into what other body parts tell you about your health as well. And so today we're gonna do a little continuation on that because it is so much information. Um, and then at 1230, we'll end and we'll come back for anybody that has Q&A. So I am going to pretty much just share my screen with you right away. And we're going to dive right in to facial recognition, tongue recognition, and nail recognition. So I'm just wanting to send this to one more person. Um, and we'll go... Okay, there we go. All right, so let me see if you can share my screen. Come on, Zoom. Oops, I've got some more people in the waiting room. Let me make sure I see them all. All right, so last week, if we do a really fast recap, we went over how your face can tell you about your health. This first picture is a sh um, what is showing a very stagnated thyroid gland in an iodine deficiency where the neck has widened. Um, the width of the neck actually will widen to absorb up nutrients that it's lacking. And you'll get this connective tissue, you know, weakness is a link to the thyroid and the parathyroid. I won't go deep into that because you can watch last week's replay. This is another example of when the thyroid is going bad, the face actually widens out and the space in between the brows becomes larger. Um, this is a tiny bit of iridology. We're going to go actually do a full dive into iridology next week with Rita and I. This person I'll go over because this person has many things that cover. Um, and so these deep lines in the forehead are heavy metal toxicity. And so heavy metal toxicity, um, oh gosh, there's so many people coming in, hold on. Heavy metal toxicity is um, one of the biggest things that will interrupt the microbiome and the endocrine system. It'll affect the thyroid, the parathyroid, the, the liver, the pancreas, um, the whole body will be affected by heavy metal toxicity. This line in between the forehead is a sign of a really struggling gallbladder right here, this deep line. This person has a lot of gallstones, a lot of parasites, which go hand in hand um, with heavy metal toxicity. When you have lots of heavy metals, you also have a lot of parasites going on. And so you have to cleanse the parasites and then you also have to cleanse the metals or they'll continue to come back. The deep dark lines on the inside of the eye that come down here is a sign of severe liver stress and liver stagnation. Puffy under eyes. Puffy under eyes is not normal. Very common, not normal. Sign of severe kidney inflammation. So the kidneys are super inflamed. There's edema probably in other parts of the body as well, but the kidneys being um, under a lot of pressure will create puffy bags under the eyes. And then the darkness under the eyes actually is adrenal fatigue. And when it bruises all the way across like this, it's a severe sign of adrenal stress. Um, this person also is missing their eyebrows on the latter half of the eyebrows. And that is a sign of a thyroid that's going down. So the thyroid, the, you know, the thinner your eyebrows are, the less your thyroid health is there and your bone health. When somebody has really thick eyebrows, they have a really strong thyroid, really strong bone health. Um, but when we're losing that last outer half of the eyebrow, that's a sign that the, yeah, the thyroid is going down. Um, so those are the main ones that I wanted to point out here. We'll move on and we're going to get back into, I'll, I touched a tiny bit on this um, last week, but the striations on the body that look like stretch marks are actually really heavily related to a B12 deficiency as well as Bartonella disease, which is Lyme's disease. Um, and this is when there's a severe depletion in the microbiome and it also prohibits your body from making B vitamins. So you can actually, these people actually give off a smell that mosquitoes love. So people with a really weakened butt, gut, gut biome often get bit by mosquitoes a lot more than people that don't have a weakened gut biome. So B12 from whole food sources will help with that. But again, strengthening the gut and healing the gut at the root cause is going to be the answer to that. Um, these striations will just kind of come up and maybe not make any sense. Like I don't get stretch marks all of a sudden, this is actually a sign of a Lyme infection or a co-infection. Um, this right here, the dimple in the chin, 
which we see is like a genetic thing, right? So what this actually is, is a very severe level of generational malnourishment. So this comes along with a huge microbiome imbalance. Um, somebody like this is generally struggling with anxiety, depression, potentially even bipolar disorder, um, usually a lot of mental health stuff when you're when it's this severe. Not everyone, but it's really common to see more of these things coming up in a family lineage where they have the dimple in the chin. Um, and that's also going to come along with digestive issues. A lot of eating disorders are found in people with this um, level of malnourishment as well, because of the malnourishment, the body is, you know, either craving, you know, to overeat or um, you're not getting the right nutrients. And so it can develop into disordered eating in some people, but we do see a lot of mental health issues with people with the, with the dimple in the chin. So whether it's anxiety or depression or just feeling blue, but it comes along with a very depleted is a very large microbiome imbalance. This person is most likely struggling from leaky gut, low hydrochloric acid in the gut. There's a low level of bacteria in the gut, healthy bacteria that's not communicating with the brain properly. And then when we get into deep levels of malnourishment, we also have to look at the health of the pancreas. And the pancreas is the main digestive organ that's responsible for secreting insulin and amylase and digestive enzymes to break down your food. So when that organ isn't working, you're gonna have a severe depletion of nutrients being delivered to the cells. So there's two things involved here, generally speaking, the pancreatic health, and then also very much so the microbiome. Um, other signs and symptoms that you will have a pancreatic imbalance is undigested food in your stools, um, lots of gas after you eat, um, having moles on your body is another sign of pancreatic weakness. Moles are the spore at which a fungus feeds and it represents a poor ability to properly metabolize starches and sugars. Um, and then, you know, a couple of the other signs, um, the gas after you eat, I always, Dr. Morris always says, the greater the gas, the greater the weakness. So if you are properly food combining and you always have had gas, we have to look at the pancreas. Um, moving a little bit deeper. So this is um, showing like the gray hairs coming out here. This is a vitamin E deficiency. So there's many things that go with graying. One is lymphatic stagnation and congestion all the way up into the brain um, that will cause, you know, the lack of the hair follicle getting its essential nutrients to keep its color and retention. But when we have a vitamin E deficiency, it's an essential fatty acid. So this will cause gray hair. It will cause floaty, floaters in the eyes. If you ever feel like, oh, there's something in my eye or you have a floater in your eye, that's a vitamin E deficiency. Um, when we have hangnails, gray hair, difficulty with night driving, especially if it's raining. So we need to get plant sources of vitamin D, vitamin E, excuse me, um, like avocados, some seeds or nuts and olive oil. If it's only if it's like a cold pressed, and this would be when you're in a deficient state, we don't encourage a lot of oils in general, um, because they are heavier on the liver and gallbladder, but I would look for some plant sources of vitamin E or even taking in this case, I would take a vitamin E supplement that was from a whole food source. Um, always organic, always whole food. Um, okay, so um, I'm gonna go here. I had this got put in the wrong spot. I'm going to just move that. So we're going to go back to the, go to the tongue here. So this um, is what's called a geographic tongue. We touched on that briefly last week. Um, it actually is also called as migratory colitis, um, benign migratory colitis, which is BMA. It reflects a severe B vitamin deficiency in the gut. And it will actually create these like little cuts on the tongue and little like striations that make it look like this. So we need to really focus on B vitamins. You can get lots of B vitamins from your plant foods. Um, and if you're on our superfoods or like the Epigenius Kids has an extremely high amount of B vitamins in it. You can also get B vitamins from nutritional yeast. Um, you know, this isn't a, the greatest source because that is a fungal source, but in an acute state, I would use this to get the B vitamins back online. Um, scallops, if you see the sides of the tongue here, the scallops in the side of the tongue actually re rec re 
represent an deficiency in iodine. So a severe iodine, the tongue is really interesting. The tongue will actually expand and grow and move forms when, when it's deficient on nutrients. So a widening of your tongue is a, a sign of essential mineral depletion. The scallops in the side of the tongue is when um, the tongue doesn't, when the body actually doesn't get what it needs, the tongue grows. And so it needs iodine, which is a, a perfect balance actually for this person would be a balancing um, I have Lugos, it's a brand, but it's a balance between iodine and potassium. Now, I want to dive into this because I don't want you running out and putting yourself on iodine because you can hurt yourself. It's not safe. You should be working with a practitioner. Um, but the general rule is you need to start with two weeks of a half teaspoon of Celtic gray salt. So Celtic gray salt, about 200 micrograms, and then about 200 micrograms of selenium. And selenium is coming um, from your Brazil nuts. So getting an organic raw Brazil nut, about two Brazil nuts is kind of all you need in at maximum eight Brazil nuts. And actually you'll know when your body has reached its selenium needs, like say you're taking two to eight Brazil nuts a day. And then all of a sudden one day, those Brazil nuts start to taste like cardboard. You are good. So that's a really interesting way to go about it. I wouldn't overeat your selenium either. So just sticking that two to at maximum eight Brazil nuts a day must be organic or you are consuming glyphosate is a really important piece. So um, you can find Celtic gray salt online look it up, find a really organic source. I mean, organic is just obviously you can't really like certify organic salt, but um, Celtic gray salt, the colored salts are your essential mineral salts. And most of what people are experiencing is a depletion from minerals. Now, the underlying root cause of this mineral depletion is the health of the adrenal glands. So I do want to make note that this is a temporary solution to a deeper problem. So we need to heal the adrenal glands and we need to get the thyroid back online and rebuild the gut microbiome. But if you are in an acute state and you're dealing with a lot of these issues, a half a teaspoon for two weeks of Celtic salt and 200 micrograms of selenium a day is what I would start with. Um, and then you can start to add um, trace minerals or ionic selenium. Um, but after two weeks, you'll actually start with one drop of iodine. Now you can over iodine, you can do overdo iodine. Um, they used to use radioactive iodine in Graves disease um, to kill off the thyroid. So you need to be working with somebody is my highest recommendation. Um, and we don't wanna kill off your thyroid. But if you start with like one drop of iodine every three days, so you would just do a drop. Um, and then in the presence of iodine, when we have iodine, in our body, like actually in its most like abundant levels, like parasites, cancer, fungus, it can't live. So this is really, really powerful to get this level of health in your body, but you need to do it properly. Um, but you need to be careful as you're microdosing iodine. If you start to wake up with congestion in your throat or coughing or clearing mucus, you actually do need to slow things down. Um, that's a sign of the iodine is too high. Uh, and you will pee out iodine. Your iodine levels will be higher in the urine as you are supplementing it because it is um, your body is getting rid of what it's not absorbing. Now, last week, um, I think it was Karis had asked about the nails. This is what she was talking about. The nails having this crack down the middle and these striations through here, this dark colors, this is a very sick person. Um, and so this is another sign of severe malnourishment, the crack down the center of the ale. This is the nail. This is actually reflective of in, internal intestinal damage. And so when we have a lot of DI, GI issues and malnourishment, we'll see the crack down the center of the um, nail. Dark vertical lines are actually a sign of severe acidosis and depletion in the cell, cell system. So this is like the cellular body is starving. This person will feel very low energy, 
very low satiation from food, extremely, extremely tired. This is a low ATP body, a low nutrient body. Um, and we need to get this person nourished as quickly as possible with whole foods, get out all processed foods and get on a, a superfood nutrient support that's from really healthy soil um, because this person is going down quick when the nails express like this. The fissures and the raising of the nail bud is actually reflective of a very advanced yeast issue. So this person has an overgrowth of yeast and which have biotoxins in the body. Um, and they also are advancing their deficiency line that goes down the center there. Um, and then, okay, nail beds and cuticle overgrowth. So you can see that the cuticle overgrowth is here. You can also see it here. So if you remember a time in your life where you used to have to push your cuticles back, anybody remember that? Like pushing your cuticles back? I used to have to do that all the time. I thought it was normal. I thought your cuticles just grew up over your nail and you had to push them back. I thought about that when I was taking this course and I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't had to push my cuticles back in probably, I don't know, seven years. Like I haven't had to do that. So when you have a cuticle overgrowth, you're actually, it's an essential fatty acid deficiency. Um, so, and then the nails breaking as well is connected to the parathyroid health, which is your body's ability to properly utilize calcium. And um, so we're lacking proper calcium levels and essential fatty acids, that's the nails. Now the darkness above the cuticle right here, this dark little, you know, half moon shape is actually a sign of liver stress. Um, so we need to support the liver to detoxify properly. So like celery juice, fresh juice, grapefruits, using some herbs that help clean out the liver. But then whenever the liver is stressed, we're actually dealing with, when the liver is stressed, we're actually dealing with a gut biome um, issue. So when the gut is having a leaky membrane or the, the tight junctions in the gut are weak, everything is leaking into the immune system and that is being picked up by the lymphatic system and filtered through the liver. Um, the white spots on the nail is an, or is an iodine deficiency and then ridges on the fingernail equal a calcium depletion and parathyroid weakness. So if you move your hand from side to side and you feel ridges, it's not perfectly smooth, that is a parathyroid weakness. Curvature of the fingernails is um, actually a severe level of heart stress. Um, Hawthornberry herbs and foxglove herbs will help a lot with supporting the heart, but this is a pretty pronounced uh, version of it. And a severe vitamin B deficiency in the gut. Um, very pale nails. So you see how this nail is really pale? Represent a zinc deficiency. Um, darkness on the top of the cuticle again is liver stress and then redness around the cuticle. So we've got redness here. If you see this around the nails and then we got redness around the knuckles. This is a yeast issue. So they have an overgrowth of yeast in the body. Cracking on the heels. A lot of people have cracking on the heels. Cracks in very dry heels actually represent a very advanced yeast in the body. I used to have this so bad. I thought it was because I waitressed all the time and worked a lot. I had dry, dry feet, dry skin, but I had severely cracked heels. Um, I haven't had a cracked heel in, I don't know, six years. Um, but this is a very advanced yeast in the body. It's also an essential fatty acid deficiency. Um, some helpful tools in an acute state, if this is painful, is you can actually sand this down with like a file um, and really use some coconut oil to hydrate the area. And then internally, you can take even evening primrose oil to help with that fatty acid deficiency. And then you should get on a parasite cleanse for sure, a fungal cleanse, um, use some microbial parasite herbs and some, some fungal herbs to get rid of the cracks in the heels. Um, I would do two to three tablespoons of primrose oil daily. Um, yeah, and then also do the internal work to cleanse candida. Now. This, I remember having this as a kid. I remember my parents thought I got burned when I was little, like a sunburn or a cha cha really chapped lips that went up. This is mold toxicity and yeast overgrowth. And I was like, as I was doing this course and preparing to teach you all, I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, like so many of these things I had as a kid and our body is, is screaming at us. But 
mold toxicity in yeast overgrowth to a severe level. This is a very sick child. Um, the presentation of the burn on the upper lip. Um, I would recommend a homeopathic remedy of China. It's called is 200 C's. I would do this every single hour to flush the liver until this started to fade. Homeopathic remedies are extremely safe. Um, you can find them at your co-op. If you can't find them at your co-op, some of these are more difficult ones, you need to contact a homeopath. They will get it ordered for you. Um, if you need a homeopath, I can refer you to a great one here. Um, and this will flush the liver toxicity and help with the regeneration and getting rid of the mold. The liver is overwhelmed. Whenever we have liver issues, we have skin issues. Liver and kidney always present through the skin. Um, and then the redness on the top of their lip is a yeast overgrowth. So we've got yeast and mold here, pretty bad. Now this is disgusting, this next one. I'm trying to cruise because we got a lot to cover. This is a severe level of thrush. We've seen thrush in our babies. Um, this is a extreme presentation of pronounced thrush. It's a severe overgrowth of yeast where the good bacteria in the gut um, are actually gone. And there's over 250 yeast strands of candida. And these candida have taken over and they live in the gut and they're actually considered opportunistic bacteria or opportunistic yeast, which means that they actually change form. So they'll change their shape to meet the environment that they're in. They actually start usually like really small and circular, circular and then they'll move like really oval and long, like almost like the shape of a hot dog would be. Um, and they will move and actually stretch themselves out into rod-like shapes that actually grow tentacles. And they exhale around 176 toxic gases. So candida is super biotoxic for your body. Um, you need to take care of this, stop feeding it, get off processed foods, get off of meats, get off of fungal foods, which are your sugars, your dairies and your grains and your eggs actually. Um, you wanna get off these foods as soon as possible and get on whole plant foods. I actually in this level pronounced thrush, I would get on microbial herbs right away. I would be on you know a Parasite M or a Super Cleanse R herb. Um, and then I would start with green juices in this case before fruits, even though fruits don't feed fungus in this specific case is very pronounced. Um, I would be doing celery juices. I would be doing, you know, celery and dandelion and, um, you know, all sorts of different herbs that you could do. Um, yep. Okay. Moving on. Oop. There we go. This person is also dealing with, um, hold on. I think people are having trouble getting in. So let me get in here. There's Autumn, okay. Okay, no one's in the waiting room now. So um, this person here is actually having a severe thyroid issue. The face is really widened out. The nose is spreading out. A lot of inflammation and roundness in the face. This is a severe weakened thyroid. Um, they probably need a desiccated thyroid at this point, um, which is a, called a glandular. It's coming from the gland of an animal, but it will help teach their thyroid how to function. It'll be much better than a synthetic version of that. Um, and oh my gosh, this person keeps trying to get in over and over. Let me just check here to make sure this person is getting supported to get in. She's in, okay, great. Um, so a desiccated thyroid would be the best support for this person for the time being and supporting with iodine and whole foods and cleaning up the gut because the gut regulates the pituitary gland, which is what regulates the health of the thyroid. Um, outside of that, we're going to move down here. This person here obviously has had a lot of face work. So um, we, there's some face work, but we have to look at this. Now, if you look here, and I'm gonna move, move all of you guys, I don't know if you see this, but um, we've got drooping in the face and we've got drooping in the ears, which I, I can see now is not showing up totally. So I'll fix this picture. But when you see drooping ears and drooping in the face, there's actually a severe silica deficiency and a calc floor deficiency calcium fluoride. So if you remember last week, we talked about calc floor. I'll move up real quick. The calc floor deficiency are these deep, dark creases in the eyes um, that we usually see it with children with high processed foods, glyphosate exposure, and high vaccination exposure. So when we have this level of deficiency, we start to get this deep crease in the eyes and we're seeing it more in the new children as those deficiencies are being passed down generationally as well. Um, and then we start to see this 
as they get older, turning into the drooping. So this person also has the crease in their eye. They have the drooping underneath the neck skin and there is drooping in this person's ears. So the drooping in the face, eyes, and extra skin is a calc floor deficiency and a need for silica. Celery juice, asparagus, those sorts of foods are going to be really, really great for supporting the body to get back to the missing essential minerals that are um that are lacking in the body. Now, as you know, our body stores certain things like our bones have calcium, our muscles have magnesium, and actually our sciatic nerves hold calcium and potassium. Um, and so when we are lacking on certain minerals or essential minerals in the body, your body will rob it from wherever it can and wherever it needs to. So supporting this person with some as essential mineral tissue salts is going to be primary to get rid of the acute phase. And then we need to support the adrenal glands and eat a whole food plant-based diet to really get the body back online and be eating from really rich soils. I would recommend this person, you know, if they have, if you have the time, really grow your own food, eat from local organic farmers, um, get a micronutrient support. Obviously we are working with the, like some of the highest nutrient dense superfoods on the planet. Um, so I would get in contact with somebody that can get you connected with that if you're dealing with this. Um, but calcium fluoride is, is actually classified. So calc fluor, calcium fluoride is actually classified as cell salt number one. And the way this was found out is actually kind of gross. Um, but this person that did biopsies um, on people, when they would burn them down into an ash, they started examining the ashes. So when we cremate people. And the number one ash that was left behind, we had tons of calcium fluoride. And this is found in the tissues of the body. So it's found in the muscles, the joints, and the veins and the connective tissue. So we see this as an essential mineral salt. Um, it's found in tooth enamel, it's found in connective tissue, muscle joints, veins, and it's most frequently used for cell salt building basic functions in the body. Um, another symptom of lacking the calc floor is an overactive nervous system because the calc floor actually calms the nervous system. So if you're like a really anxious ridden person, um, really overactive brain, ADHD, we have a calc floor deficiency. A deficiency in silica will cause things to drip and droop. Um, oftentimes when there's a need for silica, there's lead or aluminum in the body. So this will be connected to some sort of toxicity from lead and aluminum. And usually this comes along with some symptoms of constipation. Um, and when we, the, actually the veins in our body, like all of your veins in your body have like trap doors. And when we have a depletion of silica and calc floor, those trap doors actually just open up and the blood vessels will just pool. Um, all the blood will pool by the blood vessels. And this is like part of what is causing varicose veins. Now in the work that we talk about, the parathyroid is connected to varicose veins and spider veins because it is in charge of your calcium. So that calc floor again. So we are looking at a parathyroid weakness and we're looking at a silica depletion and calc floor depletion when we have varicose veins and spider veins. So we need to strengthen the parathyroid gland and we need to get the essential minerals back up. Um, your left side sciatica is actually where calcium is stored and your right side sciatica is where potassium is stored. And the body will actually steal these if you're deficient in those minerals. And as we know, magnesium is stored in the tissues. So if you start having a lot of muscle cramping, you have a magnesium deficiency, which is actually reflective of an adrenal weakness. Um, that's the root cause, but you can supplement in the meantime and then really work on that root cause issue. Um, but yeah, eat mineral salts, juice, celery, carrots, and eat bananas. Um, so we are two minutes over. So I hope that was helpful um, as we went over all that information. And um, Katie, evening primrose oil, I would, let me look into that to verify. I would wait till you're done nursing. You could probably microdose primrose oil. It's safe while you're pregnant to take to dilate your cervix. Um, but I would say you could take a capsule or so a day. You could microdose primrose oil. Let me look into the safety. Um, I don't, I don't actually know the answer. I'm currently not doing any of this as I'm nursing. I'm just focusing on my organic whole foods, my daily celery juice. I am doing a couple Brazil nuts a day to support my thyroid gland, um, and getting, getting that essential sel selenium and then I'm doing Celtic gray salt. Um, so balancing your minerals in and of itself is going to help with all of that. Um, and then those essential fatty acids, there's other areas to get those from like avocados and coconuts from the time being. 
So I'm going to stop this live and I'm going to stop recording right now. And I'm actually going to end this call. Hold on one moment.